Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. Yeah, look, it really is me. I'm just having to wrap up warm because I'm in the Arctic Circle, which is where Santa lives, with the new Porsche Taycan. Now, electric cars aren't supposed to be very good in low temperatures, but I want to prove that theory wrong with this car. And to do that, I'm going to see what its performance is like. Whoa. Make sure it's as fun as a Porsche should be. Do I look like I'm not enjoying myself? See what it feels like inside. It's just like a 911. Talk you around the exterior design. That's pure art, darling. See how quickly you can charge it. <laughs> and of course, poke it with a frozen stick. Yeah! Now, before we get into this review, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. Now, because we're in the Arctic Circle, there's not much daylight, back two and a half hours, so I've really got to rattle through this review before it gets dark. So, let's crack on. Let's start this review with an acceleration test. So I'm sat in the Taycan Turbo S and it has 625 horsepower. Then when you put it into launch control, it has 761 horsepower. I want to see how quick it is over the standing quarter mile. So I've got my specialist timing gear up here. The only problem is, is the fact that the road is made pretty much of ice. So very little grip. I do have studded tires though. It's going to be quite slippery and quite scary, but I'm going to do it. So. I'm gonna put the car into launch by going into sport plus mode, left foot on the brake, floor the throttle, it'll give me launch mode. You even get a little rumble like you're in launch mode in a normal combustion engine car. They can turn that off if you want it completely silent. Anyway, let's see what time I'm gonna do. It's probably not gonna be quite as good as it would be if I was on dry tarmac, but hey, this is in the name of science. Let's do it. Oh, struggling for traction, but then we are on ice. Oh my God, it's just all over the place. Whoa, this is insane. That's it. Brake, brake, brake. God damn it, brake, brake, brake. Oh, I think it was going to stop. Right, <laughs> let's see what we got. Uh, standing quarter mile in 14.2 seconds, which is about the same that my Porsche 911 996 3.4 will do the standing quarter mile in. So that's progress for you. Not bad doing that kind of time on this slippery, icy surface. Whew, that's actually quite scary. I've jumped out of the Taycan Turbo S and I'm now in the car which will be the biggest seller. It's the entry level 4S. It starts from 83,000 pounds. And for that, you get a 79 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for a range of around 407 kilometers. It's also got 435 horsepower, though on launch control mode, you do have 530 horsepower. This particular car actually has the Performance Battery Plus upgrade, which is almost five grand, so you're talking 88,000 pounds. Then you have a 93 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for 463 kilometers. You also have 490 horsepower and 571 on launch control. So what I want to do now is just see what this car's range is really like. I've set a destination into the sat nav. It's 25 kilometers away. I've got 88% of battery remaining. I'm gonna see how much battery I have left when I arrive at my destination. So we'll just cut that boring traveling bit out and I'll catch you in a moment. All right, and I'm about to arrive at my destination and I've got 83% of battery remaining, which means I've used 6% of the battery to go 25 kilometers, which when you do the maths means that the range for a full battery would work out to just over 400 kilometers, which isn't too bad when you consider that we're in these really cold conditions and I'm driving on snow with winter tires, which has increased rolling resistance. So this car is actually very good at managing its battery temperature. So it keeps it warmed up so that when you're driving in the cold, it doesn't really matter all that much. What does matter is that this car gives good performance. Put your foot down and it does take off. It may have less performance than the turbo, but it's easily quick enough. So 0 to 60 is about four seconds, which is less than a Tesla Model 3 performance. Also, the Tesla Model 3 performance has a better range than this car. Yeah, it's about 30,000 pounds less. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of the Tesla Model 3 performance. 
However, I don't think the Tesla is as comfy to drive. This car has air suspension as standard and it's really good over bumps. It's also super quiet. Obviously, being electric, you've got no engine noise. Also, it's got really good sound insulation, so you don't really pick up many outside noises, which you sometimes do in electric cars. I can hear a little bit of a rumble from the suspension, but that's because the ice is fairly bumpy, but that really is about it. It's rather nice to drive. Anyway, that's a sensible bit over. Let's do something a little bit more entertaining. People think that electric cars aren't fun other than fast acceleration in a straight line. But everyone knows that Porsches are fun. So let's see what Porsche has done with this Taycan. So I'm gonna put the driving mode into Sports Plus, so stiffer suspension, heavier steering. We've also got a sharper throttle response. And in normal mode, the car has 50-50 power distribution, but now in Sport Plus, it's more rear drive by, so we should be able to have some skids. I'm gonna turn the stability control all the way off and see what happens. Turning in, give it some power. Oh, oh. Now the difference between this and <laughs> a normal, let's say a rear wheel drive car with a petrol engine, is that you drift slightly differently. So you don't counter steer straight away. You turn, you apply power, and you have to keep applying power with the wheel turned in to do the drift, otherwise it won't drift. Because as you're turning in like that, it's sending power to the rear wheels. And then only at the last minute do you counter steer because then the car knows to send power to the front wheels to drag you straight. It does take a while to get your mind around it because what I'd normally do now is probably stab the throttle a bit harder but because we've got electric power, the power comes in straight away. And normally I'd be counter steering now, but I'm not. <laughs> Otherwise I'd destroy my drift. Now I'm counter steering to pull the car straight. So it's much later that you counter steer than in a normal rear drive combustion engine car. Is it fun? What do you reckon? <laughs> do I look like I'm not enjoying myself? <laughs> <laughs> Once you get the hang of it, it's awesome. Conclusion then, this is good fun. No two ways about it. They have made the car fun to drive. Woo, that was a big ink. <laughs> and I think that is enough of that. Let's talk about the design. So I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I love the look of the Taycan. The back end especially is really 911-y with these wide haunches. This light bar is super cool. This is the 4S, the entry level version. So you've got the badging there to denote that. And also the 4S has a black rear diffuser. Moving down the sides, it starts off with 19 inch alloy wheels. These are the optional 20 aero wheels, which help reduce drag for improved range and efficiency. You get red brake calipers somewhere in there. <laughs> Hard to see because of the design. This car has the chrome surround for the windows, which I like, but you can get in black, which does look a little bit more sporty and modern. This paint is called Mamba Green, and it looks wicked, especially against this white backdrop. Down the sides, the forest has black side skirts and it's black underneath the mirror there as well. There's some vents there, but this is where I'm gonna to have to deploy the frozen car wow stick, well, pole of truth. Doesn't matter that it's a pole. We're near the North Pole anyway, so that vent is fake, god damn it. Right, moving around the front. The design of the bonnet, once again, very 911-y, but the light design is completely new. Look, it's super cool, isn't it? And we've got LED headlights as standard, though. These are the upgraded Matrix LEDs. These vents are real, though. Thank God for that. Ah, I just fell over. <laughs> so there you go. That's the design of the Taycan. Love it. Though I almost broke my neck then by trying to explain it to you. The inside just feels like an even more high-tech 911. So you've got all your driving information there, you've got a main screen there, you've got climate control on screen down there. There's even an optional screen for the passenger. And you can obviously toggle between different functionality on all the screens. Then there's the quality, which makes a Tesla feel a bit cheap. My favorite thing about it though, is that they've designed the seating position to feel just like a 911. You are slightly higher up because you sat on the batteries, but the way you look out through the windscreen, the wide expanse of dash, and the fact that you can see the wings does just feel like a 911, and I love it for that. As this is a four-seater car, I need to talk about rear seat practicality, but my driver seems to be having a little bit too much fun. I'm gonna carry on regardless, so, 
I thought it would be as big in the back as a Panamera, but it's not, it's a smaller car. Knee room's actually good. The main issue is headroom. I think if you're over six foot, you're gonna struggle a bit. It doesn't really matter whether or not you've got the glass roof. It's optional, by the way, the glass roof, because that doesn't eat into headroom any more than the normal standard metal roof. The problem is, is that you've got about 600 kilos of batteries sat underneath the car for a low center of gravity. That means that the rear seats need to be raised up a bit. So that's always gonna impact headroom. Other practicality features. The seats are quite snug, so they hold you in place when your driver's being irresponsible. Jerry, can you try and be a, a little bit more sedate, mate? Anyway, so uh, what else have we got back here? Let's talk door bins, door bins, there's door bins. Room for bottles, back windows. <laughs> do they go all the way down, do they? No, <laughs> no they don't. <laughs> We've also got climate control down there it's a touchpad like your phone really very easy to use and then there's some USB connectors down here as well and uh, this is the hardest demonstration of rear seat practicality that I've had to do in any car ever uh, right that's enough can we stop now can we stop I think I think I've, I've done enough I'm starting to feel as green as this car's paint work one of the problems people have with electric cars is the time it takes to charge them. So I want to see how quick you can charge the new Taycan. Trouble is, we've still got quite a lot of charge left in the battery and I want to do it from empty to 80% full. So my driver's having to go around and do donuts to just empty the battery. I've obviously got out of the car now because I was feeling too sick earlier. I'm glad I'm not in there. Right, we've pretty much emptied the battery, there's 6% left in it, so we're gonna charge it. The time now is 2.53, and you can see it's pretty much dark, it's like it's night time. The car can charge at 270 kilowatts, and this cable can provide 270 kilowatts, so we're gonna time it. Let's see how long it takes to get to 80% form. I'm gonna do this. Right, we're in, it's good. Now I'm gonna go off and have a poo. Sorry, that took a little bit longer than I expected though. So did the car. You see, it should have charged to 80% full in around 23 minutes, which would have been about quarter past three. But there has been a problem with the cable. It was only charging at a maximum of 160 kilowatts. It actually took about 20 minutes longer than I thought. So did 80% full at 335. That's still pretty quick though, isn't it, when you think about it? And really, most rapid chargers in the UK only charge at 50 kilowatts, so that would take about 75 minutes to get to 80% full. And if you're charging at home on an 11 kilowatt home wall charger, you're really gonna have to do it overnight because that'll take about nine hours. I wanna just cover off a few more items of practicality, in particular the boot. I love how you open it by pressing this hidden button. The opening though, is quite small and the capacity is 366 litres which isn't that big really we've got our camera stuff in there and um yeah my special audi bag speaking of which the boot capacity on an audi rs7 is 535 litres and if you click on the pop-out banner up there you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car however what the audi doesn't have is a front boot yeah look which obviously i'm gonna have to get in it's a little bit of a tight squeeze. Yes, it's not as big as the front boot on a 911. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Bosch 911, click on the pop-out banner up there. I think I'm stuck. Help. Help me, Jack. Jack, <laughs> I'm going to need help. Dude. You b
So then, what's my final verdict on the Porsche Taycan? Is it a proper Porsche, even though it's electric? Well, it looks great. It's lovely inside. It's fast as heck and it's good fun to drive. Plus it can operate in extreme conditions as I've illustrated today. The only downside with it really is that it's rather expensive, just like all Porsches are actually. So yes, it is a proper Porsche and I love it.